Just over a year ago, I almost lost my life at the hands of one of the most powerful drug cartels in the world. Before I begin, I believe I need to shed a little bit of backstory. I live in Mexico, and at the time, I worked as a design engineer in a factory. Most of my weekends were spent with friends, hiking, playing board games, or watching movies. I didn't have a lot of money, and I'd consider myself to be in the lower middle class range. On the other hand, my sister held a high-ranking position in public security. This was most likely the reason why I was targeted. At the time this happened, it was an early Tuesday morning. I had a 6am shift that day, and it usually took me around 30 minutes to drive to my job. I took my dad's SUV and I began driving at about 5.30am. On my way, I saw a shady SUV parked about a block away from my house. I felt a bit paranoid, thinking someone was following me, but I just brushed it off and continued driving. In order for me to get to work, I always had to pass through this ugly neighbourhood, which was poorly lit and had a really bad reputation. I was travelling down it, and it had a two-lane one-way street. An all-black Jeep Cherokee sped by on the left lane. It then switched over to my lane, and stopped immediately as we reached the end of the street. Right behind him, I slammed on the brakes in order to prevent a collision. Shortly after, I saw four men coming out of the Explorer. Three of them were holding AR-15s while one of them was carrying a baseball bat. The one with the bat smashed my window, and shards of glass hit me in the face. One of them put a gun to my head and said, Esto es de verdad, pendejo. Bájate del carro. Which translates to, This is real, asshole. Get out of the car. It was clear they didn't want my car, and they didn't want to rob me either. They wanted to kidnap me. I knew that if I had stepped out and complied with their demands, I would be tortured and eventually met with a gruesome death. Without hesitation, I stepped on the gas, smashing between the Cherokee and the Explorer. While doing so, I ran over one of the men while flooring it. My hand was pressed on the horn, hoping to get the attention of anyone nearby. I then sped the entire way to my workplace, which had private security. With all the adrenaline coursing through me, I passed the entrance and tried to turn back. While making the turn, I crashed into a corner. At that moment, I felt like my heart would come out of my mouth. Everything felt like it was moving in slow motion. I tried to calm myself down and looked through my mirrors to see if the men were still following me, but the street was empty, now lit by the morning dusk. I turned around and drove to the entrance of my workplace, yelling at the security guards to open the doors. I parked at the entrance, got out of the car and called my sister. After that, I went inside and told my boss about everything that happened. I then went to the restroom to clean the glass and blood off my face. When I eventually came out of the restroom, I saw about ten cop cars outside of my workplace. My sister had already told me to speak with a specific officer and confirm his name. Everything went smoothly, and I had never felt as safe and protected as I did in that moment. After the whole ordeal, I eventually moved into my sister's house, which had police guarding it 24-7. I now always have bodyguards with me every time I go out. Unfortunately, this cost me my job, the relationships I had with people, and lifelong friendships. I later found out through security camera footage that there were three SUVs in total, with about 12 people trying to kidnap me. I found out that the cartel that was after me was one of the most powerful cartels in the world. To no surprise, the lead investigator of my case was eventually found dead under mysterious circumstances. At the time of me writing this, I'm currently working for the Mexican government. It's a low-profile job that doesn't pay much, but it's the best I can get given the circumstances. I've looked for ways to leave the country, but I don't have enough money or qualifications. I'm still living with my sister, and we still have bodyguards protecting my family 24 hours a day. I still remain on edge from time to time, and at times I feel like I'm in imminent danger, but I try not to let it get the best of me. So, to the men that tried to kidnap me, let's never meet again. During the mid-90s, my family and I took a trip to the beach in Florida. I was about six or seven years old at the time. We stayed at a beach house within walking distance of the shore. I was outside playing, and although my mum instructed me not to go too far, I still wandered off anyway. I tried to make my way back, but I got lost. The worst part was that all the beach houses looked identical. It soon began to rain and I started to get scared. I sprinted back in the direction I believed our house was only to find myself in a parking lot. Just as I was about to turn back, I noticed an overweight woman with brown hair wearing a hot pink tank top and a pair of those big, clunky, thick glasses that were popular in the 80s. She started waving and smiling at me from the passenger seat. I approached her and she said something like, Oh my, it's raining. Where's your mommy? Let's take you to her. 
It's dangerous to be out here alone. She was very friendly, almost too friendly. In the driver's seat, I noticed a very overweight man without a shirt on. He had a very hairy chest, and he was wearing a clunky-looking gold chain. He was also wearing a pair of yellow-tinted shades, like the ones Elvis wore. He was staring at me intently while smoking a cigar. The woman then stepped out of the van and kneeled down to me. She asked how old I was, and once I told her, she gleefully remarked, Oh my. We've got movies and games, and in the morning, we've got all types of cereal. I had been taught all about stranger danger, but at this point in my life, no adult had ever given me any reason not to trust them. The lady continued talking about how the boys have go-karts and they like to drink chocolate milk. She made it seem very enticing for a seven-year-old kid, and at this point, I trusted her. I really liked the idea of getting to play with boys my age. Then I remembered that I needed to ask my mum first, and I mentioned that to the lady. She told me that was no problem, they lived just up the road, and my mum wouldn't mind. It began raining harder, and she opened the sliding door of the van, ushering me to get in. I knew logically that I shouldn't do this, but the lady seemed really nice, and I was desperately wanting to get out of the rain. As I walked toward the open door of the van, I noticed an awful stench that almost made me gag. This set off alarm bells in my head that something wasn't right. I then looked up at the fat man who was not only staring at me with this menacing glare, but also had this really creepy and toothy smile. His teeth were stained a dark yellow, and I picked up a very fucked up vibe from him. I knew now that I should run, but the woman was ushering me to hurry up and get in. By this point, her demeanor had changed. She was being demanding, and she literally tried to push me into the van. Now in an angry tone, she shouted, Get in already! I jumped to the side and started running as fast as I could. The woman managed to grab my arm, but somehow I was able to quickly break free and run back to the beach. I think she tried to chase me, but I eventually lost her. I made it back to my mum, who was freaking out. I tried explaining what had happened to me, but I don't think that at seven years old I was able to convey the gravity of what really happened, and I didn't fully understand it myself. All these years later, however, it gives me the chills just writing about it. So, to the creepy man and lady that tried to kidnap me, let's never meet again. I work as a pizza delivery man, and on one particular night, it was a bit more busy than usual. At the time, we were also going through a bit of a heat wave, so I'd been drinking copious amounts of water. As I was driving to this particular delivery, the urge to use the restroom really hit me. Thankfully, I was close to the customer, so I could get this one over with quickly. I pulled up to the house, recognising it as I'd delivered there a few times before. Something felt a bit off, however. All the lights were off in the house. It was even more noticeable because the streetlight closest to the door wasn't working. I eventually just chalked it up to the possibility that someone was just out back, explaining all the lights being off. Whatever the case was, I didn't like the idea of knocking on a house late at night with no lights on. I had to first check that I had the correct address, and if so, whether the customer was inside or not. It was scorching that night, even after sundown. My car's AC was a joke, and the piping hot pizzas didn't really help my situation either. I opened my car door to allow some air to come in, and I dialed the number the customer provided for the order. A woman answered, and I explained to her that I'm outside the listed address for the order. She told me that she's not home at the moment. By this point, I had to relieve myself really badly, and I began losing my patience. I told her that I'm going to have to terminate the order since no one is available to pay for the delivery, especially since this was a cash order. The lady apologised, and said that she was going for a night jog, and that she lost track of time. She asked that I stay about five minutes tops because she was starving and didn't have a car. I felt really bad for how I responded, and I realised again that I've delivered to this address a few times before, and I remember her being really nice and leaving a good tip as usual. I agreed to wait, and decided that I'd look around for a bush to relieve myself. While surveilling the street for any good spots, I was beginning to believe that I wouldn't find any. Finally, I decided it was escalating to the point of an emergency, and the safest bet was to use a bush in front of the woman's house. She wasn't home, and the streetlight in front of her house was out anyway, so no one would see me. I scurried over to the tallest bush in her front yard, and began relieving myself. After the initial millisecond of relief, I noticed the sound was way off, more like pissing on something solid than something leafy. I started panicking, thinking I aimed wrong or something, but once I started, I couldn't stop midstream. I kept squinting in the darkness to see if maybe I was hitting a rock or something, but I couldn't see anything. Suddenly. I heard a way more concerning noise. 
a deep voice exclaiming, What the fuck? Before I could turn around, assuming I'd been caught by a neighbour, a man came leaping out of the bushes. He flew by me, brushing my golden shower off of him. He spit pretty emphatically on the ground, so I think I might have beamed him right in the face. I didn't see where he went after a few paces, but all I remember hearing after that was a car screeching out and driving down the road. I was able to make out his height, build, and outfit. I was in such shock that I just stood there trying to figure out what the hell just happened. Why the fuck was there a man squatting in those bushes? What the hell was he doing in this lady's yard? I turned on my phone's flashlight and looked behind the bush. That's when I saw it. There was a tattered drawstring bag sitting behind the bushes. I opened it and my heart dropped. Inside, there was a sharp knife, a roll of duct tape and a bottle of pills. I dropped the bag immediately and booked it to my car, flooring it before the door was fully closed. Once I made a safe distance, I eventually calmed down and pulled into the parking lot of a drugstore. I called 911 and thankfully the operator was very helpful. They assured me that the police were on their way and that they sent a few units over to the house as well. Eventually, I saw an incoming call from the same lady. I couldn't answer it without disrupting the call with the operator, so I just ignored it. She then sent me a text saying that she arrived at her house and asked where I was. I told the operator this and they said that officers were only minutes away now. I felt overwhelmed with guilt and worry, feeling like it was a terrible idea to just leave her at the house after I discovered what was in that bag. I put the operator on mute so they wouldn't hear, and I sped back in the direction of the house. Once I reached, I took the operator off of mute and explained to them that I had returned to look for the girl. They weren't happy to say the least. I eventually spotted her walking past the parked cars in the street, looking to see if one was mine. I waved her down, flashing my high beams. She then walked over to the window of my car, and I told her to get in. She looked at me puzzled, asking why. I told her that there was a man in her bushes, giving her a brief description of him, and I also explained to her that I'm on the phone with the police. Without hesitation, she got in and closed the door. When she heard the description I gave of the man, she immediately recognized it to be her abusive ex-boyfriend. The police eventually showed up, and we both gave them our individual statements. Her ex-boyfriend was eventually arrested and taken in for questioning. I haven't been filled in on what happened to him after that, but I'm sure he was charged for attempted kidnapping and trespassing. The girl also got a restraining order against him as well. Later on, she called us, thanking me for everything I did, and insisted on leaving a huge tip. The manager promised the next time we see her, we would give her enough free pizza coupons to last a lifetime. I just hope justice was served, and the man learns a lesson. If I hear any news on the case, I'll definitely post an update. Thank you all for watching. Before you leave, don't hesitate to drop a like and leave feedback down below in the comments. By the way, it's surprising to see that half of you guys that watch my videos aren't subscribed yet. If you love the content and don't want to miss any future uploads, make sure to smash that subscribe button and enable the bell notifications. This way, you'll be notified every time I upload. Thanks again and sweet dreams.